guys. Today we're going to be building a autonomous minecart system. And that was for sure the, the worst intro I have ever recorded, guys. We're going to be focusing on those main components. So this is the destination selection system. We have a bunch of different ways of doing this. You can see back there that I used uh, this kind of a different kind of input in there. Uh, down here, you can see that I use it a lectern. You can maybe see this from here. So I basically can select a destination using a book such as this uh, for the available uh, stations. Uh, but this is the simplest option. It's basically, everything maps back to this little circuit in here. Then we have the most complex part of the build, which are the smart intersections that we're going to have to build as well as configure for uh, each individual network that you design. Uh, and then we have the buffers, which are the components that help us deal with uh, chunk loading limitations. So we can see an example right there. So see, uh, past that point, we are not loading the chunks, so we cannot see anything past that point, uh, which is why we use those devices. If we, if we get close enough to this intersection in here, you can see the arrow back there. So basically, we're going to load that portion of the, the redstone in there and then information gets sent there and stored in the buffer for when you need to cross the chunks and then uh, the information is forwarded uh, to whatever place it needs to be. And finally, the super easy component that's going to connect everything like Lego, <laughs> which are the two-way repeaters that you see pretty much uh, everywhere around here. So my idea for this tutorial is to try and build everything from scratch and go through the same steps that anyone will need to go through in order to build uh, this system. And I picked some random points and those random points are going to, repre to represent the places where you actually want your stations to be built. The first step is to decide where you want your rails to be. Okay, and here's the updated map. Uh, all I did was to place a few rails. So I now know how I want to connect things. I decided to account for uh, differences in uh, terrain height, uh, which is something that you might face in survival. Just to kind of emphasize that those things don't really matter. And I also, because of this, I know where my intersections are going to be. So we're going to have an intersection in here. See how I haven't even uh, outlined it because uh, details are not really important uh, at this point uh, in the build. And here is where we're going to have the second intersection. For some reason, this part of the build doesn't show in the map. Uh, I'm probably doing something wrong, but I have no idea. So see, it doesn't show in the map. But yeah, so let's start building things now. I like to start by building the minecart storage. And uh, remember that we're always going to be traveling on the right uh, side of the, of the road. So when we're coming back, we're coming back through this. All right, so departures should be here and it, this should be the exact center of everything. And this is where we're gonna place a dispenser in here. So this is not a dropper, but we're gonna use a dropper soon enough here. So here we have a solid block with a note block below it, uh, then observer and repeater on two ticks facing this way. And then redstone torch. Uh, and here's where we're gonna, we want to have a power rail and uh, yeah we can have this these guys be just regular rails because we already have powered rails in there okay so let's break the axe in there uh, and now we're gonna use a dropper below it and we're gonna arrive on this other side in here so we want to connect these guys underground like so and I, I like to use glass in here because if I'm digging underground I always know uh, where the sand the block of sand is and then sand cactus uh, you you need to cover the cactus otherwise so, so the player doesn't get hurt and also it doesn't become uh, a unintended cactus farm <laughs> to place a few blocks in here and uh, the, the activator rail is going to be used to take the player out of the minecart. And you can use regular rails in here. Uh, you don't need a rail specifically here, but uh, I think it looks better if you do. And then we need to power this guy. 
make sure to not power this block otherwise this uh, these uh, hoppers are going to be locked uh, and uh, here uh, inside the hoppers you can start placing mine cards so this storage is really big <laughs> uh, you can have like uh, let's break these blocks you can have nine mine cards in here nine more in here if you want and then ten more inside those hoppers and then a few more in here so yeah this storage is really big <laughs> so uh, then you place a button in there and uh, yeah to try things out you can press the button so it's going to place the minecart in there so from now on let me just break this rail in here every time you press the button you are going to uh, start the minecart and another minecart will be placed here immediately and uh, on its way back it's going to be broken automatically and stored inside this thing i just built the minecart storage for every station so basically we can have the departures being from anywhere now and the next step is to build uh, a system that lets us select a destination the destination selector is a really simple component and uh, you can do a couple of variations in here so actually i will try and show you guys two ways of building those so in my case uh, my first destination is going to be accessed by this button in here so i want to use a redstone block in here uh, with this repeater and redstone dust and this should connect to a repeater on subtraction mode and guys be prepared because you're gonna need a lot of those target blocks those blocks are just amazing <laughs> repeater so this one stays on one tick but this one goes to four ticks and then the redstone torch and then here we need another Comparator, dust, All right, and then here you need comparator facing this way, comparator facing the opposite way, solid block, dust, dust, dust. So this is the thing that's going to send the information. So in order to take the output, you can take an output from a repeater here or here. Or you can also use yet another target block and have your output be from this block right there. So those are the places where you can take your output. This thing has one destination, uh, which is uh, station number one. If I press the button, you can actually see that uh, this goes to signal sprint level one. And if I need to add more destinations, I just need to extend this thing. So we have four uh, different um, destinations in here we're not worried about which station is going to be which so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna build four destinations in here although it doesn't make a lot of sense because we don't want to press the button go to the intersection and come back here but uh, trust me it's going to be easier this way for now so yeah this is how you expand it <laughs> and if you create a new station in the future you just have to add another line in here and this is going to be station number five so this goes to number one two three four and respectively so our next kind of selector uh, is a lectern that we can read using a comparator so i would just like to quickly point out some important points in here so you need to to have a book and quill you need to craft this item we have four destinations here so four stations in total if you just place four numbers in here, so page number one, I mean four pages, page number two, page number three, page number four. So this book has four pages. And if I place this book here now, uh, let me just have this in there. And if we check the values on the comparator, so the first one is going to be a one, but the second one is going to be a five. <laughs> the next one is going to be a 10 next one is going to be a 15 and that's because the the lectern will try to always assign a value of 1 to the first page and a value of 15 to the last page and try to distribute the other levels uh, uniformly uh, according to the number of pages that you have in your book uh, which is why I uh, would advise you to always have a book with 15 uh, pages such as this one here so the only thing special about this book is that we have 
15 pages. This is what you need to do. Even if you don't have 15 uh, destinations, uh, you should have it like this, because then if you go to page, let's say, 7, uh, it's going to output a 7 as expected, as long as you have a total of 15 pages, guys. You're going to probably want to have a, a wall in here so you can hide the redstone behind it. But uh, one way of doing it uh, would be to just have the destinations in here. And then this guy can be replaced by redstone dust. Uh, and we can have this be like so. So for here, uh, I guess we could do something like this, for instance. I'm just trying things in here. So maybe this guy from this side and a repeater on three ticks there. Yeah, it should work. Uh, and now we actually need this signal to go up here and then place this, have this in subtraction mode. And what this is going to do is to create a quick uh, two tick pulse in there. So if I press the button now, let me break the rails in there. It's going to quickly send a signal in here, see? And this is what we need to connect to the circuit that we just built back there. I can rebuild it for you because it's really not a big deal. All right, that's it. That's where we're going to be taking our output. See, this is how we do the pulse duration in there. And I actually need to get the game back to 20 ticks per second. There you go, guys. It's time to get to the most complex part of the build, which is the intersections. Uh, and I have a copy of a full intersection in here, just in case I need to cheat a little bit, because uh, those are not really... I can't remember everything uh, yeah, by heart. So uh, the core of everything uh, needs a 5x5 five five, uh, area, but you're going to uh, want to clear uh, a total of 15x15, 15 15, so an area of 15x15 15 15 to build all of the components that you see there. Uh, and the most important thing that I, I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. Uh, you're going to be building this in a very specific uh, orientation. So when you build this thing, you need to be facing north. So make sure to press F3 and uh, yeah, you need to be looking north. The reason for this is not because the, the redstone itself is directional, but rails are. Rails depend on specific directions in order to be turned. And unfortunately, we have to do this. So, yeah, make sure to be looking uh, towards north when you build this thing. I can't emphasize enough how important it is. All right, guys. So it's going to start very in a very symmetric way, by the way, uh, between the, the surface and this floor here, there's going to be a gap of two blocks. So, yeah, you don't even have to dig a lot for this. And I'm going to have four repeaters in here, locking four uh, other repeaters and those should all be uh, set to, to one tick so this is how it looks for now and uh, now it's going to be easier to keep track of the direction because there is going to be an observer facing the exact direction that goes towards north and remember to uh, to make room on in this direction because in the future we're going to be expanding the system to add more and more stations and the system your system is going to expand towards this direction okay okay so uh now another observer here and on the other corners we now can place redstone dust it needs to be uh in the shape of a cross like you see here and then we can have solid blocks in between everything uh, with the exception exception of this one so on this one on the left side you need to have a container uh, inside the container, you need to completely fill it up with unstackable items. It could be access, it could be anything that doesn't stack so that uh, you can get a signal strength level of 15 coming out of your container. Uh, so this is how it looks so far. Uh, and now we can place a few torches. So uh, solid block here, and then we're going to have a pair of torches here because of the direction once again. And another, actually this one, I think this one goes like this, if I'm not mistaken. Let me fix the repeater that I accidentally clicked. And another pair of torches on this side. And the other ones should be a little bit easier. So this one, torch here, torch there. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. And uh, here, 
uh, in the middle sections, we are going to have powered uh, rails. So we can already place those rails in here, easy enough. And we can already power those from below using uh, the uh, levers. So power this, power this, and power this. So there you go. We're also going to need two extra uh, levers that we place from below, which are in these positions in here so that uh, the rails are going to work correctly. So go underneath once again and place your torch, your lever there and another uh, lever in there. And uh, yeah, the most annoying part is basically done. I cleared some area in here uh, and uh, now what we need to do is to extend these by five blocks. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to basically uh, extend this, like uh, these legs uh, in here on all sides. Uh, in this case, we need a three-way intersection. So we don't really need this side, but I will build it anyways, because there's no difference. So as I mentioned uh, in, uh, in the demonstration video, if you want to turn your four-way into a three-way, uh, just don't build one of the sides. So yeah, that's basically it. And for the right side, we, we're going to need solid blocks because we're going to power the rails. So for the pair of legs on the right side, you're going to place a solid block. Also, we need to have solid blocks uh, on top of the torches so that they can do what they're supposed to do. So see, another torch there requires a solid block, another torch, solid block, and the final one, you should, should be fighting four of those. Uh, and then from underneath, we're going to place an uh, levers and power those all right so now we need some golden rails that go all the way to here you can remove those golden rails from this these positions because we're not going to need those for now uh, and those are going to be a little bit annoying okay so that is going to be what you see and I think three blocks in every direction you need uh, a detector view let me just check so yeah three blocks in every direction so let's do this so third block gets a uh, detector rail like so in all directions uh and then uh, we also <laughs> need to have the power on the other side i forgot about that guys sorry uh okay and then uh, place the lever from below like so I think this is how it's done. Maybe maybe there are things that we're going to need to change later. But um, yeah, I'm really trying to to make to, to keep this concise, guys. So yeah, power rails everywhere. Okay. Uh, and now two of the regular kind. Okay, so this part is where things get messy and possibly a little bit confusing. Uh, because those guys, they don't connect... Uh, exactly as they are supposed to choose. so I find that that it can be a little bit easier if we connect the corners first and then we replace uh, these guys in there but still we need to replace the rails in order for those to work properly uh, keep in mind once again this is south and this is north so uh, this should go sideways but we need to connect this guy to the other one so see by replacing the rail it already worked uh, and here the same thing so it already works and here oh, it's it's working it working surprisingly well okay so i guess i, I found a method <laughs> for this all right guys so if everything uh is correct if you place a minecart here it's going to be uh running uh forever like this in a loop so uh just to make sure your system is 100 percent correct just place a minecart and if it's not able to if it's trapped in this roundabout then everything is all right now we go back to the to the south side of our build and i'm gonna place uh either a uh, we're gonna use a transparent block here like a slab or something like this write some dust and a repeater and from the top you need to hold shift aim at the repeater and place a solid block in there now we need a torch here we can either power uh this using this side or this other side doesn't really matter uh and down here we can extend this and this so you can have a rail here to update the observers and here is where we have just this uh, I don't think 
uh, this wire goes in there. I think the wire goes like so, if I'm not mistaken. So here we're gonna have one, two, three, four blocks like this, and still another uh, post lengthener. In here, I guess it's one tick, then two ticks in here, and there is a little bit of a gap in there. Let me check just to be sure. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, one repeater, one repeater, and here, the first one is on one tick here, and the second one on two ticks, so let's go back to our build, and you can have a button here for tasks later, and basically we're gonna use this or this to reset the, the intersection here. Time to build the communication devices, so from this block, you can place a repeater here, and that's going to be powered by this target block. And we're going to have another one and cake in the middle. <laughs> uh, so here we can have this guy and this could be on subtraction mode. I guess it needs to be, if I'm not mistaken. And then another one, almost again, subtraction mode. And this needs two ticks. Uh, and then another comparator on subtraction mode right there. And our input is going to be right here through a repeater. This is the part that we're going to connect to the network later. All right. So on this side, we still need uh, some stuff. So here uh, we can have this guy like so. So this is going to be a memory latch. So notice how this guy is also in subtraction mode. This one doesn't need to be so. This is what we have so far. And uh, yeah, memory goes like so. And then here there's going to be a subtraction uh, and another subtraction in there. And actually here uh, is where we start with the green circuit. So this goes like so. Uh, and we have this. Let me change this block. Okay. Ta da! Ta da! And I guess that should be basically it. And the the output can be taken from either here or there. So yeah, and this is also going to be connected to the network uh, in the near future. So I'll just place right some dust in here so that uh, it serves as a reminder. Now we can do the retransmission system. So this one should be easy as well. So uh, where you see your container, you're going to have a few repeaters in here. So things will start to get, to get a little bit crammed in there. So yeah, just place repeaters like you see here uh, and go all the way here. So repeater, uh, comparator on subtraction mode and solid block. And here we're gonna have a pair of repeaters, but this one goes on uh, three ticks. Okay, so we're gonna take power from this guy, but for in order for these uh, pieces of redstone to not merge, we need to block the way. So here, here, and there. Uh, and now we still need to block it here. So you can either place redstone here or there. I usually choose to place it there, and then more solid blocks and here another repeater so this is probably not the best building order for this but uh yeah <laughs> this is this is how i went through the process of trying to figure out how to do this so i think yeah we need uh, another solid block in here because we're gonna read this detector rail from there so place another solid block here and finally a repeater. So yeah, when the minecart leaves, it's going to uh, retransmit the signal stored in the memory device through the science circuit. It's going to go all the way through here and the pulse is going to be shortened here. It's going to be very important. So we already have this side connected, uh, which is the, the west side uh, and the south side, but we still need to connect north and east. Uh, but those should be easy now. So to connect this side, you just have to pull the signal from here. 
and bring it like so I guess we can do something like this yes so here we also pull from there all right and we just need to place right some dust here no problem so yeah this is pretty easy and here we're gonna need more target blocks guys so if I remember if I manage to remember how to do this so we need to block the signal from here and then here we place dust uh, block the signal yes I think I think this is how it's gonna work so redstone torch there and another redstone torch there and yeah it should work so in order to test it I'll just place a powered block right here to make sure that the signal gets to the other side so yeah with signal strength level 3 we're able to connect uh, all the sides to the retransmission system in there get rid of the your test block all right this is what your intersection should be should look like for now uh, and this part now the final part is really easy for the intersection so all we need to do is to build this this uh this uh gray circuit so place redstone dust on these uh three blocks uh and then here we're gonna have whoops target block two target blocks here and there uh and another solid block in here torch torch so double torch a repeater and then a uh, observer and then here we're gonna have a repeater Peter and then redstone dust so this is actually the part of the system that we are going to expand for each destination we're going to add a new slice in here so this goes so this makes this uh, intersection uh, learn about one destination so let's add three more I will do alternating colors so this is really uh, easy to expand um, I'm just alternating colors because I think it's it's better for organization so there we go uh, four slices so I just have to complete it with the target blocks place the redstone dust more target blocks more three more repeaters three more pairs of torches uh, there and three more observers and those are the repeaters that we're going to configure soon I will show you guys how to do this uh, and of course we can have the rails uh, be extended here no problem at all and from this point I like to do this where I place uh, five regular rails followed by uh, this so uh, detector powered rail detector so that they power themselves so you can start doing this here for example so like so and then detector and then I will place uh, five more in this direction and I can do this for all the other regions so uh, for now we already have uh, the stations we have one intersection we still need to build another intersection on that other side uh, but we can try to uh, to do communication for the first time so in order to do that I will do something really really simple uh, to get things started I will simply connect these guys through a repeater so uh, down here we can take a signal from there yeah so I guess I will just extend this wire Okay, so I just connected uh, the destination selector to the intersection using a simple uh, repeater line because nothing more than that is required in here so nothing really fancy and before we proceed we need to do uh, a few fixes in here so the first one is uh, actually here so uh, the redstone dust here is not connecting to this block so I think we can fix this by moving the target block to this position and then get rid of this torch actually yeah I don't think there's going to be any problems in there so yeah just use the target block here with the torch and now this will face uh, this direction so 
we shouldn't have any problems with this and also uh, we cannot have transparent blocks underneath uh, the the detector rails otherwise minecarts are not going to be detected so see it's not the minecarts are supposed to power these blocks so yeah you need to break those blocks this is part of the science circuit as well so where you see detector rails uh, three blocks from uh, the intersection you can just place solid blocks and then get your detector rails back in place like so three and four and we should be done with the little mistakes it's time to configure our intersection and i made sure to make this process really easy i spent really a lot of hours trying to make sure that configuring intersections is going to be an incredibly easy step uh, for you to do especially because when expand the network you're going to be needing to mess with those guys uh, once again all right so the first step is to attribute numbers to your stations uh, you need to keep those in a sequence so we have four stations so we're gonna have stations number one through four uh, but we don't need to uh, preserve any particular order as long as we have number four as the last one so i will just randomly attribute this one to be number one and that one back there is going to be number two and this one here is going to be number three and that one is going to be number four of course we're not able to reach those for now because we still don't have the intersection in there but we'll, we'll get this fixed soon uh, one of the ideas is to have this configuration book with you uh, and this is the whole reason why you have to build this in a specific direction so that you know uh, that in order to set those repeaters into appropriate values you need to follow this order so uh, the site where you're going to build your ROM or the memory or the brain for your inter intersections is always going to be uh, extending south so if I press F3 now you can see that I am facing south all right and south is going to be our first direction if you look at the book it's number one and from here we go just clockwise just like a clock so this one is going to be uh, number direction number one if we go clockwise we get to west so direction number two direction number three is north and direction number four is east so let's try to remember the numbers now so station number one we should go to direction number two which is west so this is going to be station number one the first line so just place two in here and that's it <laughs> that's all uh, that your uh intersection needs to know in order to get to that station no matter where uh you send information to it okay so uh in order to get to station number two we need to go to direction number four which is east you can see it here so uh number two goes east so direction number four in order to get to number three it was which is this one here we need to go north so this is direction number two and the last one station number four also goes north so believe it or not but <laughs> your intersection is fully configured for now so let's run our first test so just for fun let's pick destination number one so we should see the white card leaving the station and coming back I'm not sure it's going to be able to, to go through all the, the powered rails without the player. Okay, it's turning and yeah, it's working. Alright, so now let's pick, let's go to station number two, which should be that one back there. Alright, so it should go straight from here. It, it, as you can see, it's already configured. So see, it's going in the right direction in here. And if I want to, to control the intersection from this, all I need to do is to run uh, the, the repeater line. Uh, but yeah, of course I will show you guys uh, where to use the, the, the bi-directional or the two-way repeaters as well for this. So yeah, this is basically it. So yeah, for number three and four, uh, it should go north. So tell the system to go to direction number three or to station number three. <laughs> And it's going to basically know the uh, the direction from this configuration down here. And let's see. Ta da! Whoa, something is wrong. Yep, telling everyone how, how easy it is. I made a mistake, guys. So I actually configured the intersection to go to direction number two, which is west. We should go north. So it's direction number 
three. <laughs> All right, so if we, if we try this now, no matter if it's the, uh, station number four or three, they both go north, uh, we should get there fine. Oh, it's so slow without the player. <laughs> it doesn't have enough momentum. Okay, so, so it's working fine, guys. One of the options that we have here is to just build our intersection a little bit earlier, so a little bit before uh, the, the terrain change. But I decided to do something different in here just to, just to show you guys one of the possibilities. So what I did here is I just copied and pasted it below uh, the terrain. Uh, with the rails and everything so what we can do from this uh, because of the distance is to connect these torches to the top because i i already have uh the levers powering uh, everything with the correct position in it and all and i can basically connect these guys so uh, where you see the torches here to the top so and uh, we should have another one right here and another one there and those are all the four. So remember that if you use this torch trick, you gotta use always a pair of torch because torches are going to invert the signal. So four torches. And if you look up here, all the rails seem to be uh, pointing in the right direction. As always, you can have your minecart placed in there in order to test it. And that, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. All right, I made one mistake here. You cannot have the detector rails in there because uh, this is going to turn the rails and you definitely don't want that. <laughs> Especially because when they come back, uh, they're going to be broken. In order to fix this, you can just break the torch and place it again. So yeah, get rid of those guys. Uh, they're not supposed to be uh, near your intersection. So yeah, I also need to get rid of those. Uh, and yeah, you can, you can basically find where to power those correctly. So I think it's one, two, three, four, five blocks in this direction. Yes, and this one needs the detector rail. So let's fix that as well because we need to, uh, to propagate uh, the signals when we leave the interception. So one, two, so this is, this is correct, one, two, three. But this one needs uh, the boost, the booster rails. And we're going to power those from below like we did with the other ones and in order to connect those guys I actually need to fix this one too one two three it's good that i make those mistakes with you guys while do while recording the, the tutorial so that uh, i can help you okay so this one i think we can do the good old torch alternating torches thing we don't need any of those rails in here all right and uh, there you go so once you go on top of these, uh, the torches are going to transmit the signal. Let's see if we can do this on this side as well. I guess we can get rid of the rails. You don't need those. I only left those in here because I wanted to show you uh, that I definitely copied and pasted <laughs> some stuff in here. Put some dust, dust. So this one is connected as well. And finally, this one, same process, pretty much the same process. Uh, if you prefer, once again, uh, you feel free to just build your intersection somewhere else, somewhere that could possibly be more convenient for you. Because rail alignment is definitely something annoying that we have to deal with. I don't think we need those yellow blocks here anymore as references, so yeah, I'll just get rid of the rails. Okay, so we need to configure this uh, intersection as well. And of course, I will connect uh, those two through two-way repeaters. Uh, but uh, just pay attention that uh, you, you, you need to find the directions for every uh, intersection that you do. So for instance, now, uh, station number one is going to be south. So it's going to be direction number one. So we should change this guy to be number one. And number two is also going to be south. So it's going to be number one um and then this is going to be number three is going to be direction number two and this is going to be direction number four so yeah this is all set up so here are some hints to help you build your uh, two-way repeater line 
First of all, it's very convenient uh, if you manage to build one two-way repeater in the middle uh, of your communication or modem system. So see there is a gap of six uh, in between the input and the output of this intersection. So I just uh, made a repeater here in the middle uh, and turns out it's very convenient. And uh, also if you look here on the other side, you see that uh, my, in my original build, I just have the redstone line going uh, one block from this thing. So this is not a good idea. So I decided to move this line one to the side and it made everything better. Also, we will probably need to reconnect the side. So let's start by basically breaking these guys in here and show you a simple technique. So what I like to do usually is to just use a power block somewhere uh, on one of the extremities and uh, from here I can see if the signal is reaching everywhere it's supposed to reach. So I just extend this line in here. Everything's going to be powered anyways. Uh, and once you reach signal strength level of two, and I want to keep a pattern here to build uh, to this side, I just bend the wire here, one to the side, and build this four by four by three thing. So like this. And then, yeah, just go around like this, place your solid blocks, and there you go. So here we're going to see yet another thing. So there is a difference in elevation. So I'm building with transparent blocks, which means the signals will climb this up, but it will not send the signal back. So if I power from this side, so see, signal cannot get down transparent blocks. So you need to watch for that. And yeah, just be careful when building uh, things like this. Uh, and then here I will try to build the repeater again and see how I can fit this line because this is just a regular repeater line. So it shouldn't be uh, a big deal. Everything seems to be working fine in here. And also you can measure the distance once again to see how far you can go with your wire. In this case, we don't really need it because we don't have any more uh, stations or interse intersections on the other side. Now we can get rid of the our reference signal from there and try to power it from the other side because you will be surprised of how many mistakes you can make. <laughs> so yeah, I've just checked it. So it seems like everything is working. We can get signals going back and forth here. So let's reconnect this guy. Uh, and I guess this is going to be really simple. Just, yeah, I just need to do this. The signal should be able to reach. Uh, and yeah, now we have a selector, a uh, station, and two intersections interconnected. And I guess we can run our first test. Uh, let's go to station number three. Let's hop on the minecart, hit the button. Because I am inside the minecart now, I should be able to be riding a little bit faster. Okay, the first intersection is working as expected. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> Okay, everything seems, seems to be working, guys. I finished connecting stations number four and three back there using, once again, simple repeaters because stations, once again, don't need to uh, receive any information. And uh, from these stations, we can go anywhere. So let's try to go to station number two, which is that one uh, really far back there. So what's going to happen here is information has already been sent and it's being stored in the intersection itself. Uh, and yeah, as we pass through the station, you will see that the redstone is going to turn on. It's not going to be exactly easy to see from this, but yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, you saw that right now. The redstone signal has been sent. So this intersection already knows that we want to get to station number two back there. Uh, but I haven't connected this one because this is my chance to show you how the buffer works. So uh, as you can see from this position, we can basically see uh, every destination, but it might not be the case uh, on your server or on your map. Uh, so in order to simulate that, I will simply load last chunks. So just go to my configurations and load only maybe six chunks should be enough. Yeah, with six chunks, we are not able to see over there. So what, what you can do is to just walk far away to the point where you are not able to see your 
stations anymore or one of their stations let's see come on this is really close to this station now okay so the signal shouldn't be able to reach this area in here so maybe around here yeah could be a good place for us to have the buffer so information is going to be transmitted to this point and stored here once the player comes to this area information is going to be forwarded uh, to the next uh, to the next buffer because you can have multiple buffers linked together or you can just have an intersection that uh, uh, is going to store the information so on my demonstration video i showed you uh, this with a really really long really far distance but this this is this should be good enough for simulations as you can see from this distance we would also have to, to have uh, buffers on that other side but yeah for now this is going to suffice because uh, the, the intersections themselves will also store the information uh, since this tutorial is already long enough i'll just show you uh, what the circuit is because the, the buffer is pretty much this uh, circuit down here they uh, the fact that they have the same color is not a coincidence so uh, I told I showed you guys how to find the point where you need to build your buffers because you can, it's, it should be the point where uh, uh, your build is partially unloaded so yeah you can basically find this uh, and then uh, once you find it uh, once the mud card goes on top of the, the detector rails uh, there's going to be a pulse shortener that you guys can take a good look from me going around it so yeah, once the minecart goes on top, a short pulse is goes through the storage, and when the minecart leaves, uh, nothing else happens. Uh, and down here, this is what you're gonna find. Just make sure to have the repeater on one tick there, the pair of comparators. You have built this many times <laughs> during this tutorial. And then this other side, you can also have cake in here, or if you're gonna go cheaper, just uh, use a redstone block, or maybe even a uh, lever in there like so important thing is that you have a uh, signal strength level 14 in here and that the comparators are on subtraction mode so yeah you can copy the circuit from here and now we can basically uh, extend the redstone line from here so keep in mind that uh, this is the input to the circuit and this is the output and since we want our signal to go towards this way we want to have our repeaters uh, in this setting probably so they're going this direction let me just put here like so and of course you can also use uh, the two-way repeaters if you're planning on expanding your uh, your system uh, towards this direction so I'll just build this one more repeater line from that other station and finally do a demonstration where I try to get from that far, that super far away station uh, to somewhere else. I just connected uh, our first intersection to this repeater line and to the buffer, as you guys can see here, very simple connections, just a repeater line. And now we're gonna run a test uh, where maybe we could try to go to station number three or four, let's try number three or not. Number three, press the button and off we go. So hopefully you will be able to see that the information has been stored here successfully so see number three in there and once we go through the buffer it's going to propagate the information again so see the redstone line has blinked so now this intersection should take us to the right place and i think that one is number three and that one is number four but i'm not sure let's see what this intersection does all right we managed to get in here guys you can see that the other chunks are uh, totally unloaded at this point, but we arrived anyways, and uh, only six chunks loaded. Let's maybe get back to 16 so you can see everything. There are other uh, add-ons and uh, that I want to do to the system, and also a new version that is going to be fully compatible with multiplayer, because uh, this should be more adequate, uh, adequate to uh, single-player maps. Uh, but of course you can use the chat to basically tell people that are going to use the system for now. Uh, and that should be it guys. I might make another video, uh, an explanation video showing how everything really works behind the scenes in here. If you guys want that, let me know in the comments. 
this should really be all guys thank you very much for watching this was a lot of work i hope you guys leave a like and comment thank you very much guys for watching this video see you next time goodbye